Well, two mysterious aviation accidents in the last 10 days or so that appear to be perhaps related to a, a hypoxia is a great time for us to remind pilots about the danger of hypoxia, which is exactly what the Air Safety Institute did last week with a special safety alert. And joining me now is, is George Perry, who is the, the new senior vice president of the Air Safety Institute, who was involved in crafting that safety alert. So welcome, George, to the uh, AOPA Live This Week uh, studios. Well, Tom, thanks for having me. And uh, it, it was a, a very tragic week. And although without the, the full NTSB investigations being complete, things point to possibly hypoxia being a contributing factor into one or both of these accidents. So we felt compelled with the, the, the close um, proximity of the two happening back to back that we should uh, send out uh, an Air Safety Institute safety alert um, something that hasn't been done on a regular basis, but to, right. to raise that awareness uh, for pilots in general aviation who deal with uh, high altitude environments. Right, and that alert went out to pretty much all of the AOPA members for whom we have email addresses and, and mm -hmm. really pilots in general for whom we have email addresses. So what are the hypoxia symptoms that people should be aware of? Well, and that's, that's a great question because everybody's symptoms are a little bit different. Now there are some general symptoms that we included in the air safety alert, but unless you are one of the privileged few to have gone through a hyperbaric chamber or the reduced oxygen breathing device or ROBD mm -hmm. training, you don't know what your specific individual symptoms are until you experience it. So short of that, the best thing that a pilot can do is know that if they don't feel quite right, that they should uh, be alert for it being possibly hypoxia. Mm -hmm. And there is a tool that pilots can use to help um, judge the quantity of blood mm -hmm. uh, oxygen saturation in their blood, a pulse oximeter. Tell us how this works. Pulse oximeter is a simple medical device. It's non-invasive. You clip it onto your finger um, and through the magic of medicine, it will tell you and give you a, a numeric readout what your blood saturation levels are. Um, they're very inexpensive. You can buy them at, at any drugstore. There's a variety of aviation vendors that also sell them. Uh, bottom line, when you use this, it tells you how much blood is in your, uh, how much oxygen is in your blood, and it'll give you a numeric readout. 90% um, mm -hmm. or above is pretty good. Anything below 90%, and now you, you should be aware that your blood uh, doesn't have the required amount of oxygen your brain needs to function. Right. So I've been through ROBD mm -hmm. uh, training. You, with your Navy, Naval Aviator background, uh, mm -hmm. probably have done some of that sort of thing too. What, what was that like? Uh, well, I, I've done the hyperbaric chamber probably a half dozen times mm -hmm. and ROBD training every year. Uh, it's an annual requirement for most military pilots. Um, the neat thing about it is they can put you in a simulator environment, deprive your brain of the oxygen you need to function properly, and so you can see the degradation in cognitive abilities, motor skills, uh, judgment and the formative processes that, that you need as a pilot to function well. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that, as someone who's been through that training, you know this, the insidious nature of how hypoxia will sneak up on you. Um, if you've ever driven a car late at night and you're a bit tired and you kind of nod off for just a microsecond but you wake back up, hypoxia is very similar to that except when you nod off you don't wake back up. And so that's why it's imperative that pilots monitor their blood saturation levels so they can see what their status is well in advance of those symptoms creeping in. 